We are looking at the painting from 1663 by the Dutch painter Cornelis Bega. The painting hangs in the J. Paul Getty Museum in California. Bega painted an alchemist holding a scale weighing something. His other hand touches a red substance. He sits uncamped in his chaotic surroundings. A lot of stuff is lying around. The interior is shabby and cluttered. By the time Bega painted his alchemist, this activity wasn't taken very serious anymore. The practitioners were the subject of ridicule. In fact, it was ridiculed long before Bega painted this painting, and it could be seen as a very old-fashioned theme by 1663. Here we see an engraving after a composition by Peter Bruegel. An alchemist is adding a golden coin to his mixtures while his wife misses money from her purse. In the background we can see where it all will end. The alchemist and his family end up in the poorhouse. This is a painting of an alchemist made by Adrian van Ostade, Bega's teacher. Van Ostade made his painting in 1661, two years before Bega created his painting of an alchemist. Van Ostade put a lot of effort in painting the paraphernalia of the alchemist, stuff that's lying around. On a paper lying on the ground, a text is readable. It says, oil and work is wasted. This comes from a treatise about the art of mining, refining and smelting metals. The book was called De Re Metallica and it was written by Agricola. It was published in 1556. This disorderly interior seems to refer to how alchemists were usually accused of losing everything they possess in their search for the Philosopher's Stone. This would be the stone with which other metals can be turned into gold. Van Ostade, his painting of the alchemist that we see here seems to be a satire on human folly. The alchemist painted by Van Ostade he seems a bit cartoonish. He is more like a comedic type than an individual person. The alchemist painted by Bega is seriously engaged in his activities, whatever the viewer may think of the value of it. His expression could also have been on the face of a serious scientist. I like the muted colouring of this piece. It is painted in many subtle greys and browns. In a very subtle way, Bega uses reddish, yellow, brownish and bluish colors, especially some red details stand out a little. For a painter like Bega who shows an interior with all kinds of objects, it is important to apply colors very carefully. An object which is painted in a certain color may not be too colorful or else it would stand out too much. In that case, it would not take that place in space that it is supposed to take, in a convincing way. Using a computer program, I increase the saturation of the red a bit. Now it stands out more. A little too much vermilion would make this detail seem out of place, as it starts to do here on the right. Bega's sense of detail is stunning. In all the different objects he paints, he has an eye for all kinds of little details. An earthenware jar is broken and a piece is missing. Some dust of the white stone or chalk has fallen onto the paper on which it is lying. These objects seem to have dust all over them. For example, the large jar on the left in the shadow. Bega carefully makes the man in the middle the lightest part of the painting, together with the lighter detail of the white wall on the left. Even this white wall seems mostly a darker grey than the man his skin. Bega carefully manipulates the image to direct the attention towards the figure and the expression of the man. Most of the objects and the clothing of the man appear darker than his face and leg. Roger de Paals, in his book about the principles of painting from 1708, explains that a painter who knows how to work with light and dark carefully chooses the colours of the objects that he paints. This in order to carefully build up the tonal values of a piece. The window showing a view outside should be much brighter than Bega painted it, if he was being accurate. 
The light outside is always much brighter than an interior where light from outside falls into. He carefully manages to tone down all of the tonal values in order to direct the gaze of the viewer to the motifs that matter most to him as a painter. The expression of the alchemist reminds me of children playing idle games in all seriousness. I recently made a video of a work by Chardin of children blowing bubbles. This painting reminded me of that in that respect. The activity of alchemy wasn't taken very seriously at the time Begas painted this work, but he painted the man in all seriousness and with a certain dignity, perhaps because many things we do in life which we think are valuable are as useful as his search for the Philosopher's Stone.